Spooky season, it's time for Threat Wire. Meta, still feels weird to say that, continues to be in security hot water. In 2019, Meta self-reported that they had been storing over hundreds of millions of users' passwords in plain text and were searchable by employees. This self-report led to the start of an investigation by the Irish Data Protection Commission soon after. The Data Protection Commission was notified by Facebook that it had discovered that hundreds of millions of users' passwords relating to users of Facebook, Facebook Lite, and Instagram were stored by Facebook in plain text format in its internal servers. We have this week commenced a statutory inquiry in relation to this issue to determine whether Facebook has complied with its obligations under relevant provisions of the GDPR. This investigation has come to an end and resolution. Meta is now to pay 91 million euros as a penalty for storing passwords without encryption or any form of protection. You would think for being one of the most scrutinized companies on the planet, they would remember security basics. But then I remember my peers and friends work there and that they're also human. So everyone, let's please remember to encrypt your passwords. Thank you. While the Kia Boys hacks were a physical way of getting into cars, entering cars via software is a completely different beast. Usually requiring extensive embedding skills, reverse engineering, and more, using software to hack into a car is deemed to be notoriously hard. The latest find in car hacks, though, was concerningly easy. The hacks, which were found by some of the same team responsible for other web hacks found on multiple car makes, found a vulnerability in the Kia web portals that was able to do a takeover of almost every Kia model from the past 10 years. What kicked off this discovery was the ability to create car dealer users and the fact that it was poorly protected, giving essentially administrator access to cars, user assignments, and information. Using this, they were able to demote actual owners and change them to other owners. This reassignment gave no notification to the legitimate owner side. The hacks were able to target any car via paid tools to get the starter information needed to target the cars, specifically an API that turns license plate numbers into car VIN numbers. They even packaged the exploit up into a nice web app so they could do the takeover on the fly. But, being responsible hackers, they executed a proof of concept and shared their findings with the Kia team. After two months of back and forth, the bug has been resolved and the team was able to share their findings. I'm reminded of a tweet by Kelsey Hightower, a well-known software engineer and self-proclaimed minimalist. At this point, I'm willing to pay more money for applications with zero smart features and physical controls for everything. I'm also reminded of a post about how from a cost perspective, using a smart screen and smart enabled features actually reduces cars price because everything that would normally require buttons and maintenance are now simply controlled by a screen. It feels like buttons are becoming a luxury. A security researcher gained a lot of traction on what they believed was a Linux 9.9 CVSS scored remote code execution. When the news picked up traction in the community, rumors were flying around of exactly what was vulnerable and what was happening. We knew something was coming, but what? It apparently could affect Mac OS as well as it was a Unix-based system. Something with printers? Cups? Eventually, the first write-up dropped. Here's what you need to know. The vulnerability stems from the CUPS service. CUPS stands for Common Unix Printing System and manages many of the things related to printing via the Internet Printing Protocol. Yes, I literally mean printing like printing paper. The researcher was awarded four CVEs for the findings. CVE 2024-47076 scored 8.6, CVE 2024-47175 scored 8.6, CVE 2024-47176 scored 8.3, and CVE 2024-47177 scored 9.0. By combining these four vulnerabilities together, remote code execution is possible on a system. Using one of the CVEs, you can force the CUPS service to bind to 0.0.0.0 instead of localhost to allow an attacker to install a bad printer. Then, using another CVE, the printer can give CUPS bad attributes. The malicious attributes are written to a temporary postscript 
printer description file using another CVE. And finally, the last CVE is a code injection vulnerability that ties all of this together and is taken advantage of to trigger the malicious code when a malicious print is used. To emphasize, this is not a zero click situation. The victim must trigger a print on a malicious printer in order to set off the RCE. The researcher is currently withholding other findings, as alluded to in their write-up. They are in the process of doing a disclosure for these secondary findings. You're probably wondering how it became a rumored 9.9. .9. It came from taking a preliminary suggested CVSS score given by a security researcher at a well-known company and running with it. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of September 30th, 2024. If you enjoyed this ad-free show and would like to support the work that we're doing here, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. As a heads up, I published a new YouTube video over on my channel and I'll link it down below. If you want to find me everywhere else online, I'm at Ending with Ali on everything including Minecraft. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.